I'm not prepared for the live today. Um, so I need to make the buttercream. So we're gonna do that quickly before we get started, just while people are joining. Um, I'm just getting it up on my iPad so that I've got all the um, comments and like chat and everything. So please bear with. Um, so my butter is currently melting in the sun <laughs> in the kitchen. So I'm going to put that in the microwave if it's not already cold enough. Um, so let me, yeah. So we've got two blocks. Um, it definitely needs to go in the microwave because it is nowhere near hot enough. Wow, seven people already. Hello, everyone. Um, hi, Sammy. I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm very excited because I go away tomorrow. Um, I'm going to turn the light on because the sun was in here, which made it brighter. Um, but I'm going away tomorrow for an early birthday weekend in Weymouth. And we've got loads planned. Um, I'll tell you a bit more about it in a minute, but, um, yeah, we're going for Saturday to Monday. So if anyone messages me, I will try and get back to people, but I'm going to be like super busy. So, um, and like just out of the hotel. So I'm not going to be replying to messages that quickly, but I'm going to try and post on my bacon one. Cause I thought people might like to see it. So, um, I'm going to put a little poll up on my Instagram, but if people want to see what I'm getting up to, then I'll post it on there. Because I do have a personal Instagram, but I thought people might want to see what I'm getting up to. So, um, that is that. The cake that we're doing is a six inch salted caramel cake. Um, salted caramel is such a popular flavour at the moment. I had to go and get more flavouring and I bought loads of it. This is the one I use because I know people are going to struggle to find it because I struggle. I get it from Morrison's and if you Google it, it's really hard to find and it's also really expensive if you don't buy it from Morrison's. It's a pound for these little ones or if you get it on like Amazon, then it's like five pounds for a tiny little bottle. So yeah, definitely don't buy it on Amazon. Go to Morrison's, but you have to stock up because literally no other supermarket has it. Tesco's doesn't have it, all of the others. So yeah, you have to stock up. Hi, I'm probably gonna say your name wrong. Rihanna, is that? Right, I'm sorry. Um, I'm gonna turn the light on so we've got a bit more light. Microwave because now our butter. Rihanna. Oh, uh, did I say it right? <laughs> I hope so. Um, so I'm gonna talk you through my weekend while we're melting butter. I'm gonna do it for 25 seconds at a time and then um, see how we go. So um on saturday which is the day we're leaving which is tomorrow we're going at half seven we're going to pick someone up on the way at eight me and my sister live like right next to each other so um i'm gonna pick her up and then we're driving to get the other person um so we're going to weymouth that's three and a half hours away so we get there and then we're gonna have chips on the beach which i'm very excited for and then after that we're going to do we're gonna do a bit of shopping, see how it goes. Um, and then that evening, we're going to Dorset Burger Co, which if you have been to Weymouth before or you wanna go there, that is so, it's amazing, it's so good. Um, and it's basically a burger company, but they are so good. Like I live by Gourmet Burger, cause I love it, but this is even better than Gourmet Burger. And that's like a chain, whereas this is like a restaurant. Um, but it's really, really nice. So we're going there and then, Afterwards, we're going out, like out, out, which I cannot wait for because it will be the first time going like out, out since COVID. So I'm very excited about that. Um, and then on the Sunday, um, we're probably going to be hungover. So we're our hotel is literally on the beach. So I'm planning to get up at like nine ten and just lay on the beach. Um, probably really hungover. And then um, in the evening we're gonna have a movie night in the hotel. So we're gonna buy loads of snacks. We're gonna have some alcohol and just like chill because we're probably gonna be a bit hungover. So we'll probably just wanna relax. Um, so it's kind of like a beach day and then come back to the hotel. And then on the Monday, we're going to, I think it's Portsmouth, um, which is like on the way home. And we're gonna have, we're going bowling. Then we're gonna eat at Nando's. And then we're going to Splashdown, which I love. I've only been once in my life. Um, my family used to always go as a kid when I was a kid, but I used to never go because I was like young and like too scared. So um, then we're going to do Splashdown, which 
it's my favorite thing um and then what else have we got i think oh i forgot on saturday we're doing crazy golf and i'm quite good at it um but there's another person coming this year who didn't come last year so she might be better than me so we'll see and um, basically the two losers have to buy drinks um the one that loses the most like the last person they buy everyone a drink and then the person that is second to last just buys the winner a drink um so yeah it's a very exciting weekend i'm quite excited and then next week the cake decorating live is going to be a bit early so i wanted to update you guys on that because i know you will be wanting to know but basically um i am having a birthday party with my family on the 15th it's a sunday i think it's next sunday um so i think it's the 15th it's whatever next sunday is um so i'm making the two-tier cake for then and it's going to be all real cake it was going to be a dummy but the other day i baked too much chocolate cake i baked loads and it was a four inch cake so instead we're going to do so i didn't want to waste it um but i don't want chocolate cake as the main cake so i use the chocolate cake for the top tier and then we're going to use um i think we're going to do white chocolate and raspberry for the base we'll see i'm going to mix this button now so i don't know if you can hear me let me know if you can still hear me over that because i always think it's really loud but everyone always says it's not um so yeah, we are just mixing up our butter and then we're gonna make the buttercream, salt caramel buttercream. Um, it's in three colors. We need white and then I need a pale pink and then I need a slightly darker pink. So I got this and I didn't realize it was a different color. So this is the one that I have. It's color splash and it's pale pink, dropping stuff. Um, but this is the one that I got. And again, it's pale pink, but it looks different. So see the color difference so i'm hoping that they turn out the same because this is obviously the new one so fingers crossed it turns out the same and then i've got a darker pink which is just normal pink um and then i'm going to add a tiny bit of that but i don't want it that dark it's not going to be that dark at all um it just needs to be slightly darker than this because that is basically white um so we need three colors and then we're doing a tie dye so i think you know the drill if you watch my lives um but basically you just pipe lots of dots really randomly on the cake and then you blend it and it turns out lovely so that's what we're going to be doing um we're just whisking up this butter oh i have a message um that's actually mixed pretty quickly so i'll put you back and then we're going to add our icing sugar so I am going to need my fill. So, move all this out of the way. Right, get my spoon. That's what we're using. And then we're just going to weigh out. Um, so we've got two blocks in there. So I'm gonna do, I think 750 grams of icing sugar. I don't know why I'm spooning it out. I could just pour it. Um, that's why I don't pour it. <laughs> I just got it everywhere. God, I'm such a mess. So messy in the kitchen. Right, 500, 600, 700, we need 750. There we go. Right, so I decanted my icing sugar. I'm starting to regret it. Um, I feel like I should have just left it in the box. It's probably easier. Um, look, I've got icing sugar everywhere just all over the counter now I tried to be clean um, I'm sorting out my room and wardrobe 
this is making it so much more fun. Oh, <laughs> that's cute. Right, we're gonna start adding in the icing sugar. This is going to take a little while. Um, I'm looking for boxes for brownies and my brownies tin is eight inch square. I cut it into 12 to 16 pieces depending on how many brownies people want. What boxes can I get so they fit exactly or similar? Um, I would have no idea. I The way that I do it when I'm searching for boxes, because obviously I've only searched for the ones that I have um, and mine aren't eight inch squares, um, mine are all rectangle. So I would say just to type in the measurements. So what I would do is I would type in eight inch square box, um, postal boxes, something like that, into Google and see what comes up because that's always what I do. It's just so much easier uh, because then it comes up with ones that are the right measurement rather than searching for a box and then realizing that it doesn't have the right size. I think that's probably the easiest thing to do. So I'm just mixing this icing sugar in. We've got quite a bit here. If anyone has any questions, ask now. And then we're gonna start on the tie-dye. I hate that you get icing clouds with um, silver spoon. It just goes everywhere. I feel like I'm in a smoke room. inches but draw a diagram make sure you've got the right measurements if you want it to fit exact I would say add an inch onto your size because then that allows the flaps around the side of the box to go down um, and also your brownie isn't going to move around that much with a little bit of room to spare because um, like if you're putting tissue paper in the base of your box then you're going to need extra room for that so i would say add an inch onto your measurements right we are almost almost mixed i don't know if you can see all this smoke but there is so much of it just icing clouds right I need to wipe up all this icing sugar that I got on the side. Just move that to one side. So, I don't need the scales anymore. Just tidying all the icing sugar. all of my utensils as well and then I managed to get icing sugar all over them right add this teeny bit in there I do sugar cookies but I'm really considering going into cakes too would you recommend I take any courses? The only thing I struggle with is stacking the cakes. I don't think I don't think you need any, if I'm completely honest. Um, I didn't take any, and I wasn't a baker before I started. I would say if you struggle with anything, watch YouTube videos. Um, most of it comes with experience. I never did any like training or like watched. I never really watched any videos like tutorials. Um, I just kind of like tried things out. But the stacking of the cakes, the main thing is just to make sure your buttercream is nice and stiff, like not too stiff, but also not too soft. Um, it's more so that you don't want it to be warm. Um, 
and just make sure that you're putting an even coat of buttercream in between each if you're using any filling um in your thing so say like jam or spread make sure that you don't do it all the way to the edge because as soon as you put that spread to the edge it's going to one want to spill out the sides and two it just means that your cake can slide around whereas if you have a little barrier of buttercream then it means that it won't slide around as much and the buttercream will also stick to the layer above right we've got a tiny bit we've got such a little amount left just going to flavour it. So salt and caramel. Um, right. So that's all flavoured. So what we're going to do is we're going to split it into three bowls. We're going to use this one as well. Um, thank you. Yes, with the filling, I always create a little buttercream pool of things such like caramel will continue to practice. Um, yeah, what I'll, I'll try and remember, um, I actually, I, I've done a vlog um, of today, basically. So I'm going to try and um, put it up either at the weekend or I will well like while I'm away or it will go up on Tuesday um but that actually includes the stacking of this cake and the crumb coating um so I'm pretty sure um <laughs> I hope so I was meant to film it so um yeah then you should be able to see like how I stack them but I think the main thing because I don't know what your like what issues you're having but if it's anything to do with like it moving then i would say fridge time like number one thing to do is fridge time um that cake has been in the fridge bearing in mind it's almost 3 p.m it's been in the fridge since about half 10 um and that is because it needs loads of fridge time and then it means that when i take it out and do the final coat it's going to be hard so you don't want it to move at all um so yeah and also I fr refrigerate it in between. So I fill it in between each layer um, and then I refrigerate it for 20 to 30 minutes. And then I do the crumb coat on the outside. I don't crumb coat the outside when I've straight away filled it because it will be really wobbly. So um, yeah, to be fair, I either leave it overnight or I give it a couple of hours. So like today I don't have much on so because i i'm going away tomorrow so um i thought well i'll just do it in the morning so i baked it last night but i stacked it this morning and then as long as i've got like three hours where i can leave it which i have time to do that because she's not getting it until like five six um and it means that it's got plenty of time to set um yeah i think i've answered everyone's questions so far i'm just dividing it equally um between two bowls first because the dark pink i do not want very much of it um because obviously it's going to probably take over the tie-dye usually um and it'll end up being like the main color so you want to keep the light colors in the higher quantity and then just use a little bit of the dark color unless it is a very dark ombre but nine times out of ten it will go dark anyway you don't have to add a lot of the dark buttercream to do that just because it's a darker color so it's gonna overpower the lighter ones so i've done two bowls for the white and the pale pink we're going to try out this color splash because i don't know how dark it's going to be because it's a new bottle like new packaging and everything so um i'm gonna use you so i'm getting buttercream all over me right we need 
I need my Wilton. Here we go. Um, so for the white, I'm going to use a bit of the Wilton white white. I'm going to turn you slightly so that you can see what I'm doing and put you down. So I'm using, it's called icing colouring, but it's the same as Wilton White White. And we're going to, this is the small bowl. So we're just going to add a little bit. pink we're going to start with the pack that's already open because it's got a tiny bit left in it and then if um i need any more then i'll use the new one killing me today um we're gonna add a teeny bit of the wilton because i want it to be more of like an icy pink rather than a cream so we've got our pink and then we need a teeny bit of the darker pink i think this should already be open nope it's not I don't know how dark this goes, so I'm not going to put very much in until I've mixed it a little. Mm, this is quite a nice pink, if you only do a little bit. I'm going to add more to that one but I'm also going to add a tiny bit of this pink to the other one just because I think it's a nicer it's a nicer tone there you go so that's the dark one because I still want it to be very like nudie pink. So I don't want it to be too dark. Um, I don't think I'm going to decide in a minute because it's not like set in stone sort of thing. Um, I've kind of got free reign a bit. So I can kind of do all my stuff has icing sugar on it. Um, Colour Splash is so good considering the reasonably price, I absolutely love it. I keep reaching for them more than my pro colouring in pots, less mess. Um, also, have you tried Sugar Flare chocolate colouring? They're absolutely amazing. Oh, okay. I never used candy melts before. Um, I used to always just use Colour Mill. And I do love Colour Mill still because I think the colours are a little more accurate in terms of like what's on the pot they match a bit better um but i use color splash for all of my buttercream um i rarely use color milk for buttercream unless they have an allergy because color mill is like amazing for allergies um but apart from that i'm just gonna add a teeny bit because i want this a tiny bit darker to contrast more There we go. So we got 
this pink, this pink, and then the white needs a little more wilt and white white. So, and then that's our kind of like a creamy white, but it is pretty white. I think it's just the lighting in there. Um, so, so many bowls. So, we need piping bags. So... the ends off of these you don't need a nozzle on these because you just pipe in little circles Right, one bowl down. Now for the white. Second one down. So, white, pink. Right, I'm just going to wash my hands. So... Pink, white. 
scissors. So I'm just cutting holes in all of the piping bags. I'm going to start off with white. So I just go round and randomly pipe little blotches on and basically just fill in until you're happy with the blend. I want more white because as soon as you put a colour in to tie dye, it always takes over. So I always make sure I've got plenty of white because you can always add a darker colour. But the problem is if you go too dark, then you would have to scrape it all off in order to fix it. Um, whereas if I scrape this and it's too light, then I can just add a few dots and then scrape it again. So it's always better to go on the lighter side. And you always want to make sure there's a contrasting colour to another colour. So like white shouldn't be next to white. You always want to put, obviously you can do larger splotches, but you want to make sure that each area has like a contrasting colour next to it. Any gaps? I'm just going to put a bit of pink in and then I'll go in with the white. Use that tiny bit actually. And then I've got a little bit of pink left, but I'm going to go in with the darker pink. any excess on the top because you can 
literally when I scrape this and I have loads of excess, I can put it on there and then I can use that to smooth. So, get your scraper. I'm going to do the top first because it's got to be very smooth because it's going to be smooth top and then it's going to have the ridge around the top as the edge um, but there's no drip on it so obviously you can't hide any imperfections on the top so I'm gonna do this to make sure that the top is nice and smooth and then it means when we go around the edge here it's going to sort out any edges at the top one with a bigger like a bigger depth why does that keep doing that keeps catching in the middle which it doesn't normally do This is so cool it looks similar to the watercolor effect i've never tried i don't know what that is it might be the watercolor effect i just call it tie-dye <laughs> it's kind of like just i made up the name because i didn't know what it was called need to work out which edge i want as the front I want the rough edges. So I think it's going to be this side. 
need to slightly Okay, so we're going to leave the ridge, but I don't want the ridge too high at the front. So I think I'm going to go with this as the front. So I'm going to mark it with my little whiteboard pen. So that's the front. Um, so now we're going to be decorating with um, macaroons, um, dried flowers and peonies. So I'm going to shove it in the fridge because I need to scrape around the board. I don't want it to be soft when I do that. So um, this is what it looks like. And we're leaving the ridge because I'm going to put a bit of like gold leaf and stuff on it. So I want it to be sort of rustic. So we're going to use any um, excess as piping. So we're not having crazy amounts of piping on the top, um, just like very small amounts, but um, I can use the leftover for that. Um, I still don't know where one of my nozzles is. I've lost one of my nozzles, um, a Wilton one, so it was like six pounds, but I don't know where it is for the life of me. Um, so that's very annoying um i'm gonna run to my room because in my office i've got two new nozzles which i'm very excited about so i'll show you those i'm gonna use one today So, I've got these two new nozzles, um, that's what it's meant to do, um, so it's like a star nozzle, but my one, I've actually got, it's this kind of like star nozzle, but um, it's just way bigger, but I don't know where it is, so haven't been able to find it for ages, I'm convinced it's in this box behind here, but I'm sure I've checked there. Um, and then this one is to do little leaves so it looks like that and it's the 352 it's mirrored when i'm filming this so like i can't read the numbers right that one's 32 um so we're going to use 32 for today and we're just gonna we're not gonna actually mix the leftover ice and we're just gonna put it in a piping bag and then if it's like tie-dye then that's fine. So I need to cut a hole in that. Put the mug in. dropping ice in everywhere 
we lost some on the side of the cup. Put that over there. And I've got it all over the counter as well. So I'm very clumsy today. that one and then we've got leftover of the dark pink so we're just gonna squish that in there and then like I say when it comes out it will be all like mixed together um, but not perfectly which is what we want I need to move this icing that I spilled everywhere there we go right so I need to get the macarons out of the freezer and then they're gonna defrost in the fridge for like half an hour and then by the time they go on the cake so as you can see it's all kind of like mixed so I'm gonna pop out to the freezer we've got like a chest freezer outside which I store anything which is in a box um so like macarons because they take up so much space so BRB I'm pretty sure when I checked I had the right flavours so fingers crossed um, what are you your pistachio which we don't want um, she didn't specify flavour so we're just going for ones which match the colour scheme um, so we've got lemon is it lemon? lemon vanilla so we're gonna go for lemon because they're a goldy color um so i'm gonna yeah go for them because they're easier to luster um i can't use anything like um those look like two different ones but they are both lemon supposedly they're a slightly different color but um yeah it's easier to luster them when they're that colour. Um, raspberry is my actual favourite flavour of macaroon, but um, and these are the ones that I use. They're just poppies, and they're in Tesco's, and they're like I said, they're frozen, so they're really easy because you just take out the flavours that you want. So I'm going to take out four, and then what you do is you put the rest back in the freezer. So that box is full, this one is not. And then yeah, back in the freezer. done so I'm gonna put these in the fridge because I don't like to defrost them at room temperature and then what we'll do is we'll take them out when we need them um, I need a little can like a little plate to put them on I'm gonna use this little cake board are back in there um, I'm gonna get the flowers out I need to clear this space a little bit because um, the flowers are obviously dried so we don't want them to be um, getting dirty 
because you can't wash them or anything because they're dried. So I've wiped that down and then I'm going to put a tea towel on the side just so that they're not directly on the floor. my hands um where have I put them I think they're in they must be in here so we've got our dried flowers and then this is my little box of fake flowers um sorry I have been sidetracked um, what's your favourite thing to bake? Um, honestly, just cakes. I, I prefer doing cakes over anything else, um, just because it's more creative than like brownies or cupcakes. Um, I just prefer like big cakes. So yeah, um, but occasion cakes. Like I make wedding cakes as well, but they're a lot more stressful. Um, so we're gonna be using these peonies. Um, I have got some darker ones, but I don't know what they're gonna look like. So I'm gonna, I think they might be too much, so um, yeah, I'm going to stick with these ones I think because they're nice and light. So I've got five, but I actually I think I'm going to take four out because I don't think I need five. Um, and then we've got the dried flowers, lots of little bits. And then this one, this one molts a little bit, so... I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I'm going to try and figure that one out, but I don't typically use dried flowers, so. Um, I'm just going to close this gate. So. Um, we need gold. This is silver. Gold is in here. Um, we have luster for the macaroons we need some sprinkles we're only lightly sprinkling because it's meant to be very like you know minimal where am i white so i'm using these little white ones these have taken so long to run out. I use them on so many cakes. I need to buy more colours because they are really, really good. Because they're good for drips and they're also good for, um, like, kind of naked cakes. It's not naked, but, like, when it hasn't got a lot going on on it. Because you can kind of, like, press them into the side of the cake and they look really nice. That's what I'm going to do. Um, and then we have rods. So I've got pink and white i'm not sure which ones i'm going to use yet i need to buy some gold ones um and then i've got little gold balls as well um i think that's probably everything and then we've got our gold leaf which i get from amazon um so we're going to luster our macaroons so I need a little bowl for that. So I'll grab a little bowl. So I just pour a tiny bit of this into a bowl. I only did a teeny bit. Um, and this is off eBay. The things come off now. I don't know why, but um, yeah, it's just edible luster. Um, and then I just take this fluffy brush, which is a makeup brush, but obviously you don't use it for makeup. Um, so it's a real techniques one, but I just like the shape of it and I couldn't find any like paint brushes like it. So I just bought the set 
and then all the others you can use for makeup but obviously you just take this one out um i think the set was like 10 pounds but i used this that much that i thought it was worth buying the whole set just for this um so yeah i think you want like a really fluffy brush because paint brushes just don't seem to do it as well um so macaroons And then, oh, um, questions, questions. Random question, but what size or litre is your fridge? You're asking someone that has unfortunately no idea. Um, so it's a double fridge. I don't know if that makes any, any difference. Um, it doesn't say it on it. So I've got no idea, but it's a double fridge. Both of our fridges are double fridges. So it's a floor to ceiling fridge and a floor to ceiling freezer. Um, one is mine and my sister's and one is my parents. Most of the time I use my parents' one to put my cakes in because the temperature's better in it. Um, whereas the temperature in this one is more like hit and miss. So I typically use that one because the temperature is always between three and five. Whereas this one can range, so I don't like to use it. Um, but yeah, so... I always use that one but um yeah all I know is that it's a double fridge um I personally would not use anyone smaller um obviously we have personal stuff in it but I have about half of the fridge for cakes and it is not enough because most of the time if you're doing cakes like this one today you can't fit two cakes on one shelf because it's just not big enough so I find that I need one cake per shelf if they're big cakes, which in a fridge like that, you just can't. I really want to get a Beko fridge because I've seen the ones that I like in terms of like layout. Um, and if you follow Shannon's cakes, then you'll see, but she's got Beko fridges and the way that they're laid out is perfect for cakes. They seem to be a bit wider. So you fit slightly more on shelves. Um, and yeah that's the one that i want it's a like floor to ceiling fridge no freezer in it or anything um so yes i'm gonna need more of this luster already um where is it um right next question i'm not sure if you make swiss meringue buttercream is that one done um sorry i'm not sure if you make swiss meringue buttercream um, but I'm currently making it and no matter how much I put in the fridge, it still say stays soupy, soppy. Do you have any advice? Um, that is the problem with Swiss meringue as far as I'm aware. Um, I'm pretty sure it's meant to stay quite soft um, because it's meant to be meringue like. So um, kind of like airy. So people typically use it when they want like a lighter buttercream. Um, whereas, but I find that if you leave normal American buttercream out of the fridge, if you haven't put any milk or anything in the icing, um, and it hasn't got any like fresh fruit or cream, then it is nice and soft still. But unfortunately I don't use it for that reason because, um, I've heard that it's quite soft. Um, but yeah, I've got no idea. I don't know what you would add. I assume that you could add more icing sugar to make it stiff, but because the meringue side of it is meant to be very like light and airy i don't know whether that would make any difference um was it oh no i poured all of my luster out try and get that back in the pot um i don't know if that was like a preference from the customer or whether you chose to do it um but like i say if it's not a preference then i would just stick to American buttercream I've never felt the need to use anything else because I've never had any issues with American buttercream right these are nearly done I need to get them back in the fridge because they are defrosting and I don't want them to melt on me not melt but like soften if that makes sense So, you're nearly, nearly fully coated. So, 
so that is what they look like as you can see there's a gold shine on them so i'm going to sh shove them back in the fridge to do the gold leaf um, I'm gonna scrape this excess off the board I'll move you down I need to move this over slightly find are the most popular designs at the moment um honestly drip cakes i've made so many drip cakes in the past few months um everyone seems to love them and i love making them so yeah i would say most popular is loaded drip cakes where they got lots of chocolate um alcohol bottles all that kind of thing on top of them There we go, nice clean board. So we're gonna go in with the gold leaf first just so that I know where I'm placing stuff. And then we're gonna start with the flowers and I think we'll end with the macaroons just cause I don't wanna put them on before I know where everything else is going. So that's the front. Um, it's looking beautiful, Amy. Oh, thank you, Natalie. Uh, that's very sweet. I'm going to add some of these sprinkles. So I just drop them on there and then I just sort of lightly pat them. So they're not fully pressed in, but they're also not just gonna roll around. And then I'm gonna use my finger to press some into the sides.
I've had someone message me about a cake for her daughter's first birthday. She wants a six inch cake, 30 cupcakes, 30 cakesicles and 30 heart cakesicles. She wants girly floral designs and a cake topper. That sounds like a very good order. Um, is that too much? Um, do you mean you charge like you told her that was the amount and she's disappeared? Um, I think people don't understand how much things are. So if you charge two pounds for those 90 um, small items, then that would be 180 pounds. Um, so if you did two pound 50 that would be please someone do the maths for me 180 that would be 270 so you must not have charged that much but a six inch cake you'd say around i'd say around 70 pounds um and then i would do two pound for the cupcakes and two pound 50 for all the cakes are cool so whatever that price adds up to basically um so i mean that sounds about right to me but you got to remember, people don't understand how much stuff costs. Um, so she thinks that that's a reasonable amount of things to ask for. And then when you come back with a price, she's like, oh, I can't pay that price. Um, I wouldn't be disheartened by it because obviously everyone has a budget. Um, some people's is smaller than others. Um, but yeah, I would just take it on the chin and not like think anything of it um you will get people that will be like that i used to have people that will be like that most people kind of don't bother messaging me if they have a small budget nowadays because i think they can probably guess that i'm going to be more expensive um but yeah it will get to the point where you're sort of not phased by people leaving you on red and stuff because it does happen um but yeah like i say obviously everyone has a budget and some people's is lower um, and they also don't have the heart to just say that's out of my budget. Um, I have people say, I'm sorry, that's out of my budget. And I'm like, that's perfectly fine. Can I accommodate your budget? And then they might say, well, you're, sell you're telling me it's £100 for this cake, but I've only got, I don't know, 70 And I say, OK, well, we can make it smaller. We can put less on it. Um, we can do an easier design. Um, and then most of the time that they do come back and have it, they just have a simplified version. So you could always do something like that. But obviously she hasn't come back and told you it's out of your budget. She's just ignored you, which is annoying. But um, yeah, it does, does happen. Um, but yeah, I would just forget about it. And um, yeah, don't like change your prices or anything, because I definitely think that's reasonable for the work that would have been included. Um, right. Yeah, I don't want to message her to seem eager, so I'll leave it. Yeah, I, I wouldn't message unless she had actually come back and said, sorry, that's out of my budget. Then I'd reply saying, well, I could try and accommodate that. But, um, yeah, just take it as, you know, she's she'll go and find it somewhere else. For cheaper it might not be as good quality because for that many items it's going to be expensive but um yeah if she didn't want to come to you then that's perfectly fine she can go to someone else and try and get it cheaper also you never know sometimes people blank you for a couple of weeks and then they come back and say hi can i still get that cake and it's like oh so you didn't manage to find it cheaper anywhere so you've come back to me and that's usually what happens so you might find she comes back Right, I'm going to add a few of, do I want to add these or do I want to add white? I think I'm going to go white. Where's the front? That would be funny. Yeah, it would. It's, it's always funny when people come back. Because sometimes they say, I didn't manage to find anyone else, so I'm coming to you. And then sometimes they just come back. So, um, yeah, she might say, she might not. So...
I'm going to leave it at that because I need to add all the flowers on and obviously I might find that there's little gaps that I want to fill once I start adding them on. So I've never used dried flowers, so I'm assuming that I cut this. Little fly away bit. Um, try and bat off any fluff from the other bits, but I'm assuming I cut this. If anyone's used any dried flowers before, let me know. But I'm assuming I don't put that whole thing in there. I don't know. I might put the whole thing in there because as you can see, it's been like rounded off on the end, whereas if I cut it, it's gonna be a raw edge. So we're just gonna go all out and it's stuck like that. So I can't try and rearrange it. So we're gonna go I'm using these on my birthday cake and I can't wait. I'm very excited. Um, some pe sometimes people are just comparing prices before picking one baker. People like to shop around. Exactly. That's that's what I was saying. She'll either, it's either that she's trying to find someone cheaper, so she'll go and have a little look around, or she's just waiting for some more quotes because some people take a lot longer than others to get back to people. I've had people where they've said, I'm just waiting for a few other bakers that I like to get back to me. Can I let you know? And I'm like, yes. And then they might come back a week later and say, those people came back and I wasn't happy with what they got. So I'm going to go with you, blah, blah, blah. So um, yeah, I would wait and see because you never know what people are going to say. Where do I, I'm going to cut this one, this little tiny one. Um, because I think I'm going to put that on the side. Where do you get your dried flowers from? Um, they are from Etsy. I mentioned it in one of my last lives, I think. Um, where's her little card? Right. If anyone's wondering um, where they're from, this is the lady. And this is how you spell it. It's called, I think it's Mamie. Mammy. Peaches. Um, but that's her Etsy. So yeah, that's the lady that I got them from. Um, she was really good. She posted them really quickly because I said to her that I have a cake this week. So many people on Etsy are so lovely. Um, because I said, I was like, I, I'm always doing last minute things because if people order last minute, then they say, oh, I want this on my cake. And I'm like, that's going to take a week to come, but they don't realize. So there's been a few people where their stuff's been really last minute. Um, so I, um, have to always message the people and say like, please, can you send it really quickly? I really need it. So yeah. Um, but she's who I got these ones from. And then my birthday ones, which I love, I will try and show you those in a little while. I showed them on the last live, but I'll show them again. Um, they're from Erica, Erica's flower design. I think it is on Etsy. Um, so yeah, she's also very, very good. I don't know where I want these. So, can I move these? I want to kind of like spread them out a bit. Sorry guys, I am going to be just trying to figure out where I want these for the next unless I split those I might split these rather than it being one big bunch I'm going to split it into lots of little ones that was the best idea that I've had all day Because I want to put some on the side here, so then it means I can do that. So, we're going to put you at the top.
This is for a 21st birthday. The girls ordered from me loads of times. Um, and she is the sweetest girl ever. So um, I'm hoping that she loves this because I really want her to like it as much as I do because I'm loving it so far. Um, might put that one. Put you to one side like that. And then I'm going to cut both of these. Oh, put that there. And then I'm going to put a bit of piping on the board here. There's a few sprinkles on there, so I'm going to try and scrape them off. There we go. So I'm going to pipe a little bit. I love this nozzle and I've literally only been using it about two seconds. Um, oh, I just remembered I need to put the macaroons on. So I'm going to get those out of the fridge. We're going to put a macro in there and then I'm going to put the dried flowers down the side like that, if you can see. Um, and then I'm going to put the fuzzy one. So you won't be able to tell, but I'm actually sticking these into the cake slightly um, just so that they really stay in. That looks adorable if I say so myself. Um, I'm gonna put a few sprinkles on the top here because obviously things have been covered because we didn't know where we were putting everything. But I like to put the sprinkles on first because otherwise it can look like you've placed them afterwards and you've placed them in the gaps. Whereas I sprinkle it all over and then it means that some of the sprinkles kind of like show through all of your toppings. Um, my my iPad's died, so if I take a little while to respond, it's because I'm looking at the chat on here, not on my iPad, because it's dead. Um, I know it wasn't your childhood dream to be a cake artist, but does it amaze you how good you've become in such a short amount of time, how natural you are at it? Um, that's a very, very nice comment, thank you. Um, if I'm completely honest, I still don't really understand it. Um, I don't really understand the whole YouTube thing. I don't really understand anything if I'm completely honest. Um, yeah, I kind of, I just wing most of my things. So um, I just kind of winged it and it worked, um, luckily. Um, I'm quite a creative person and I like to do everything. Like literally if you went in my office, it has painting, it has sewing, it's got cake making stuff it's got literally anything you can think of so because I'm qu I've got quite an addictive personality 
I will, if I try something new, I'll just spend all my time doing it, which I think is probably the only reason that I've got good at this. Without sounding big headed, I do think I've developed quite quickly, which is kind of just like picking up from what you said. Um, but yeah, I think just kind of spending all my time thinking about cakes. Um, it sounds really sad, but I mean, I do have, I have more of a life now than I used to. Um, when I first started, I did spend a lot more time just doing everything cakes. Uh, whereas now I have a lot more freedom, I guess, but um, because I feel like I don't need to sort of train myself as much. But um, yeah, I definitely think it's a personality type of thing. I'm a very, very quick learner. Literally anything I do, you can give me a day and I'll be pretty good at it. So um, yeah, I think it's just a personality trait, if I'm honest. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm, I am just as puzzled as um, everyone else, if I'm completely honest. Um, but thank you, that's really sweet. It's nice when people notice, because I mean, I obviously appreciate how much I've grown, but when other people notice it, it's really nice. Gotta love repetitive customers. They are the best. You get to know their preferences and their taste. Well, and she literally just lets me do what I want, which I love, and she is so sweet. Like, yeah, she's just great. Um, this is her 21st birthday cake, so um, I'm very excited for her to see it because obviously it's a big birthday. So um, where do I want this? I might go like, might go round the back or round the side. How will it look? I have to try it out for size. Because it doesn't matter if you can't see it, it's more that um, she can obviously eat it. <laughs> so I think we're going to go, because it just kind of adds background colour. Um, it just kind of adds background colour, so even though you can't necessarily see it round the back, it means that when you look through like that, you can still see the top of it. Um, but yeah, I really want to add one here, but I like that you can kind of see what's going on here. Um, unless... I like that it's on that side and then on this side, if that makes sense. Um, I don't want to fill this side of the board because then it becomes too symmetrical. Um, I really want to use some of this, but it's very multi, so I think I'm going to have to be very, very careful. Um, it's also very tall. If I did it like that, then um, it's going to be very tall to the cake, so I don't know. Because they all come down to here, I might not be able to use it. Um, because, yeah, I think it's just it's going to take up too much space um totally agree Natalie. you're surely making it look easy <laughs> very nice um yeah i think I used to think about things a lot more um which some of you might kind of like resonate with i used to think about things a thousand miles an hour whilst it was going whilst it was like happening whereas now i kind of just do it without even thinking about it um I think I'm going to leave that there because I just don't think that that's going to go. And also it's just so, I don't know if you can see, but bits are falling off it. And I don't think we want that on a cake. I didn't realise it was going to molt that much because obviously I think um, all the pampas flowers that the person sells are for cakes. So I just kind of assumed that they would be um, non-molting. I don't know whether to put... A peony? No. No, I'm going to stop. I'm going to quit while I'm ahead because I don't want to make it crazy. I'm just going to check my little my little order book to just make sure I've got everything. Um, yeah, peonies, dried flowers, macaroons, gold leaf, which we've got. Um, so I think that is it. I'm going to wipe this little mark off, which tells me which is the front because we don't want to see that. So I think we're going to go with that. Um, there you go, from afar. Um, this is what we've got in the bottom corner. I don't want to... Um, and then this is what we have on the top. 
so yeah um, and as you can see we've got sprinkles stuck to the sides as well um, so there's peonies dried flowers and that thing at the back which I didn't know what it was called but I had to find one for my birthday this is called a spear um, so if you want to find one you can just type in on Etsy um, dried spears and then these will come up usually they come with lots of little bits um, so yeah, that's where I found the set because there's loads of sellers. Um, some only do particular colours, um, others do a lot more colours. So that's why it's good to not necessarily look at a particular seller. Like you might look at this seller, she does a lot of pinks and whites and golds. But if you wanted something else, then you might find it with someone else. Um, I'm going to put this back in the fridge while we finish up. Um, and it's four o'clock and I think she's coming at about half five. So we got plenty of time to just box up and do any little admin -y bits. Right. Sorry about that. I had to remove a shelf from the um, from the fridge. So I'm going to have a little snack and then because we have plenty of time, um, we can have a little chit chat. My parents have locked my dog out. Um, so I'm going to let her in. She's outside because um, I locked her out of the kitchen, but then they let the dogs out of the other door. So we're going to let her in and then... Um, <laughs> hello and then we're gonna put her i mean i finished baking now but so i can actually open the door um so yes because the cake is all in the fridge so um i can answer any questions while we have a little little snack um so i've got my water i'm absolutely starving even though i've eaten quite a lot so we are at my little dining table area you can see my mum's knitting in the background because she's left it in here um so there we go so have we got any questions yes we have um my kind of girl super crafty very um you know what it is my mum is very very crafty if she's watching this she'll be um loving this but yeah we're a very crafty I wouldn't necessarily fa say family because everyone else isn't very crafty, but me and my mum are very, very crafty. Um, so how many cakes per week do you do on average? Typically it's, I would say maybe like between four or five on a busy week. Like I've had in July, I had a couple of weeks where I had between nine and 12. Um, but then there was other weeks where it was like four or five. That's my most common amount, which I'm completely happy with because um, if they're all in one day, then obviously that's a lot. But if some of them are during the week, like this week I had four, um, but one of them was Tuesday, one of them was Thursday, Friday. I think the other one was Sunday, um, like last Sunday, but I mean this week. Um, so yeah, it's it's nice when they're spread out but also I do like being busy I quite like doing a lot of cakes at once um yeah I just like being busy um I don't like not being busy so that's why I do all the crafting because if I'm not working then I need to do something else so I still get up at like I, I had like a couple of weeks where I was getting up really late when I didn't have as much work but I'm like back in the routine of even if I don't have anything on I still get up at like eight um yeah, just to try and be productive. Um, cotton candy parties are also do some nice dried flower selections. I will definitely be taking note of all of these um, places. My parents have let the new puppy in. Um, so I'm going to show you the new puppy because she's usually in with my mum. It's fine. Come here. Come here. 
um, this is the new puppy. So um, yeah, mm, hello. Um, yeah, this is the new, this is my parents' new puppy. Um, but yeah, usually she's in with my mum um, during the day. But because my dad's got back and like I finished, I just let her in. Um, but yeah, this is the new little puppy. Um, I'm gonna put her back in with my mum because I don't. I think she doesn't know where she wants to go. Um, where is the chat gone? How long did you spend decorating cakes before selling? Just want to say I love your designs. Oh, thank you. Um, if I'm honest, I was in a rush. Um, like I say, I just rush into things, impulse decisions with everything I do. Um, so I started decorating cakes and this was like when I was telling my family I was like I'm gonna run a business and all this and they were like okay yeah and I was making cupcakes for them cake pops all of this and then um I was making all these things for like family parties and I did that for like two weeks at the end of May and then in June my brother was like right if you want to actually start selling and take it seriously then you want to register with the council um you want to like get your hygiene rating all of this stuff so then I was like right okay I'm gonna do this I did all my research and then I registered on the 5th of June um and then I just started baking and yeah I hadn't even done a cake when I registered um I had baked like two cakes like years ago um for a charity for work but obviously they didn't have to be very nice because they were charity cakes so they were just like two layer cakes like really flat um and then they were just covered in frosting um but yeah nothing major if i'm completely honest i just i mean if anything i would say that that's a little bit reckless but again my personality because i kind of pick up things quickly i feel like it just kind of forced me to pick up things because it was like well you've started the business so if you don't do well then you've got nothing else because i'd quit my job um i meant have you had the chance to do a wedding cake yet um yes i've done a wedding cake so far i've done one um i've i think i've got one in a couple of weeks um but yeah i've done one already which i delivered um i did one i think which was a one tier um it was a one tier wedding cake because of COVID, the dogs are playing. So if you can hear anything, that's them. Um, but yeah, it was one tier. So I didn't deliver it. They just collected it. Um, whereas the delivery and the setup is the main kind of like cost of a cake. So um, yeah, I had done my first one where I actually delivered it and everything um, about a month ago. Um, and then I've got my next one, I think in August, the woman's buying some tasters next week so she's having them on tuesday and then it's a last minute wedding so if she actually goes ahead with it it's going to be on the 29th of august um so she's potentially booking me like two weeks before so um yeah um yes check cotton candy parties out they are amazing um use Sh sugar lab for 10% off um they have a fiver friday at the moment so some lovely things on offer oh okay i might have to check them out oh i think i mentioned it right at the beginning of the live but i don't think i actually confirmed so the birthday cake live which i kept telling you all about last live the last decorating one we did um so that is now going to be on the 14th i think because my birthday party that I'm having with my family, like barbecue, is on the 15th. Um, so the birthday cake live, where I do the two-tier cake, is now going to be on the 14th. Um, it was going to be on the 18th or the 17th, the day before my birthday, um, which was like the Tuesday. But now it's going to be on the weekend um, because that's when the party is. And then what we're going to do is um, we're going to eat the cake on that date, but then I can just like post a vlog or something of my birthday on my actual birthday um because i was going to do it as like a birthday live but i might still go live on my birthday just doing something else so we will see um but yeah so the birthday live is now moved so i know some people said they put reminders in their phones or something so um if you want to put a reminder in it's now next sunday which is the 15th 
Um, how do you work out recipes for different size cakes? Honestly, some bakers will have a proper way of doing this. Um, but like I say, I just wing everything. So I have a standard recipe, um, which is, it's one lot of four inch cake, which is four tins. Um, and then it does half of a six inch cake, which is two tins. And then, um, it does a third, I think it's a third, um, of an make a third of an eight inch recipe so it means that i divide it by two and a half is that a third no that's divided it by three so whatever two and a half times something is um makes half i god i can't work out the maths but basically for an eight inch cake i times it by 2.5 and then for a six inch i times it by two so you just need to find a recipe that does one size and then times it by whatever your tin sizes are my cakes are very tall um like that one that i've just made is about eight and a half inches tall when i measured it um and that's just the cake itself so obviously you need a lot more mix for that um you could probably do a six inch with my four inch recipe but it'll be very short um it'll be like three layers tall whereas mine are four layers but they're very big layers um they're like two and a half inch layers so yeah um or two and two inch layers yeah just have to trial and error it basically um because it's so difficult because everyone's layers are going to be different sizes in terms of like how thick they are um i've seen some bakers that have layers like that whereas mine are like that um so it just it depends um but like i say you just have to find what works for you um it also depends what tins you have if you have pme tins they're very deep but if you have like tesco's tins which i have a couple for brownies but they're like that thick so they're obviously gonna provide a lot less um of mix or like space for them to um rise so you can't put as much mix in there um so yeah i would say also get pme tins i always recommend it they don't have to be pme um branded they just have to be the style of pme where they're those deep tins because even if you put a lot of mix in a shallow tin as soon as it gets to the top it starts to curve slightly um whereas if you put it in a bigger tin i find that they bake flat like mine when they come out they're flat um there's two tins that i have where they slightly curve but then when they cool they slightly flatten um but i find that if you were to use like the one inch tins they always just don't come out flat at all and then you obviously have to cut the top off because you can't have it too curved um going to take notes i need to see this um would you say having a hand mixer instead of a stand mixer um is going to affect the quality of the things i make it doesn't affect the quality it is more that it makes it more difficult for you it doesn't make it any different for anyone else um i use hand mixing for um things like brownies i don't mix them with a stand mix i just don't like the way that it makes them um like cakey um it puts too much air in it whereas I just use a spatula um, and a bowl and it's very messy. It takes a lot more, like it can take a bit more time um, and you can't do it in as big batches, but I just prefer the way that it makes them all nice and gooey. Um, so yeah, I always hand mix them. For cake, I used to use a little hand mix, um, but it was more that I was just lazy and um, it just hurt my arm. So that's why I got a stand mixer. Um, but you can you can get very cheap um, stand mixers. It's sort of thing where you can save up for one and then get one off Amazon, something cheap just to make your life a bit easier. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, and then it might just save you a bit of time and kind of like effort because you won't be... It, it's more that when you get busy, you don't want to be hand mixing. Um, but if it's a case of like budget, then you can hand mix. You could hand mix and be a big bakery um but it's more that it will affect you in terms of like you'll be more tired probably um and like if i was doing lots and lots of cakes i wouldn't want to be hand mixing 
just because it can occasionally take a bit more time but um yeah i don't think it's a problem when you're starting out at all um i definitely used to hand mix i did it for about two months and then i was like i cannot do this um because my arms were just hurting way too much um do we have any more questions i need a cup of tea it's pouring down with rain currently um which is not nice. I'm hoping that the weather gets nicer for the weekend. Oh, look at my new bottle. I got it when I was last in Weymouth. Reminds me of Love Island. Um, and it's just a little, it just makes me drink a bit more water because I'm terrible. I don't think I've missed any questions. So let me know, just resend it if I have missed any. Um... I just saw someone's comment which I had not seen, um, Natalie's comment, it says yeah she's great hence why we're all here, <laughs> you guys are so funny, um, oh here's another one, do you use baking bands, no I don't, um, I've never found that my cakes um, kind of like rise enough for it to be a problem, um, if they were really curved then obviously you have to cut that excess off and it would be a waste, um, but I find, like you'll see in the vlog, that my cakes are never very curved, so they always go pretty flat. But I think, again, I think that's something to do with the tins. Um, whenever I use other tins, if I have lots of cakes to make and I use slightly thinner tins or like Tesco's tins, um, then I do find that they curve a lot more, so there's a lot more waste. But I've never felt the need. Um, it's also quite expensive. Um, if you buy the branded baking belts, I think they're like six pounds each and it's fine if you make less layers, but my cakes are four or five layers tall sometimes. So obviously I would need to have five baking belts, which then makes it like 30 pounds on baking belts. So that's the main reason I've never done it um, because I didn't know whether they were any good and I didn't want to spend that much. Um, how much do you charge for a giant cupcake cake? I have no idea. I would say that you base it off of time. Um, so my hourly rate is £15. Um, that's what I try and charge anyway. Um, so typically most of my cakes I put down three hours because that doesn't include any washing up time because I personally don't include it. I know bakers that do, but um, and like oven time, I don't include that. I just say an hour to bake an hour to crumb coat and an hour to decorate and that's the way that I do it um there are the odd cake where it might take a bit longer so I will add time on if they've got like fondant work or anything like that um but yeah it's usually so that would be 45 pounds already um and then I add on the ingredients um so yeah most most cakes are typically like six inch is like 60 to 70 pounds. So I would say base it off of how long it's gonna take you and the ingredients, because obviously, because it's a giant cupcake, I don't know what inch it is. I base all mine off um, how big they are, because then it's how much ingredients you're gonna use. So just work out how much ingredients you're gonna use for it, um, whatever tins you're using. And then I would work out the hours. Um, I'm pretty sure I can't remember how people do the base of those cakes because I have seen them. Um, but I would say that it'd probably be at least three hours, probably four. Um, and then whatever your hourly rate is, because there's a lot of like the kind of shape of it. You need to make sure that it looks right. Whereas I feel like a normal cake is easy because you're just stacking four even layers on top of each other. Whereas that you need to make sure it's all in proportion and like looks right so yeah i would say like three or four hours probably and then whatever your hourly rate is if it's less then um it will be less altogether um but yeah i have never made one because i don't even know where i'd start i know there's a tin for it but i just i just don't know how i would put it together um so yeah that's how much i'd charge Um, look at this little card I made. I made this little card. So these are my little thank you cards that I designed. It's the merch 
print on there. Uh, my little thank you cards, which go out with brownies and everything. But I drew, I need to make one online, but I drew a cutting guide for this girl. Usually I just tell people how many portions, but I know that she wanted 30 portions. Um, and she said like, I don't care if it doesn't feed everyone massive slices, I'll just cut them into little squares. Um, but I wanted to give her a little guide so that it would give her 30 because it will give her 30 like reasonable portions. Um, so because the cake is like that tall, if you think of what half of that is, each slice is going to be like that and then it will be like that. So it's like a square, like um rectangle, sorry. So yeah, I put a little cutting guide on there just to say, and I didn't bother really going into detail. Like I always put please transport um, in the footwell and store in the fridge, but she's had that many that she knows the drill. Um, but I just put it on there anyway, just a little reminder. And then, yeah, I drew this little cutting guide. And then I said this gives 16 portions. And then if you cut half height wise, and then you'll get double. So, yeah, <laughs> I thought that was quite funny. But I need to design one on the computer because um, I don't... I mean, she won't mind, but I want to give like a proper one, not just one that I've drawn. Um, but, yeah, so all the sun's coming out. Is there going to be a rainbow? I don't know. Um, so if people don't have any more questions, then I'm going to love you and leave you because I've got so much tidying to do. I need to pack for tomorrow. I need to shower, wash my hair because it's not actually greasy. It's, it's shiny because it's basically black now because um, I dyed it. But um, I need to wash my hair. Um, I need to pack the car. Just got so much to do. Well done on the cutting guide. <laughs> Thank you. My little work of art. Um, yeah, I actually, I used a cookie cutter to draw this because I wanted it to be a perfect circle because if I tried to draw a circle, it would have been very wonky. It would have been more like an oval and she would have been like, that's not even the shape of the cake. Um, but yes, I've got lots, lots to do this evening. I'm meant to be filming a podcast episode, so fingers crossed we get that done because that needs to go off on Sunday. Um, I'm going to be editing that late tonight, hopefully. Um, so yeah, I think I might film that now. I think I'm going to um, box up the cake so it's all done and then I might film it now and I can always stop halfway through um, if the lady comes, but... I think she's coming after half five so I've got an hour and I don't think the podcast will be an hour I think it'll probably be 45 minutes so um yeah I'm gonna I think quickly film that now what color are is your hair naturally it's like a mousy blonde um there's like a bit of you can see my skin um because it's not that thick but um yeah I haven't got any roots at the minute but yeah it's like a it's like a dark blonde probably like a lighter blonde I don't know I haven't had it my natural color for a little while I used to bleach it um when I was like 15 and then I've kept doing that until recently and then I've only recently gone dark but I much prefer it um and it, I also don't have to dye it as often as when I bleached it so that's why I leave it but yes definitely not this color I'm like my mum's color um so if you saw my mum's hair in the bake-off that's the kind of color that is like a dirty blonde but yeah um how long does it take you to film the podcast so it's usually like an hour's worth of footage um but the editing is so long because if you think you don't watch it once it's the same as a video so like when I film the day in the life vlogs and they're like 45 minutes long it's not just you watch it once and then it's done I watch it do all the first cut of it cut everything that I need to cut out of it then I have to watch it again to make sure that it all flows um and then I might cut a few more bits out then I have to add music um if I need to add music so then I have to watch it again so if you think you're watching a whole 45 minutes over and over again so then it's like a few hours to edit so yeah it takes a little while um the podcast will be an hour long probably then it will cut to maybe like 50 minutes um and then I need to edit it upload it all uh, the uploading sometimes takes like a couple of hours um onto YouTube or on Spotify so um yeah I'm gonna try and get it edited today and then that means I can upload it ready for Sunday um 
and like premiere it and everything so yes there is lots um would be cool if you did a tutorial on how to cut and post it on your instagram highlights oh that's definitely something i will do you know what i will do that for my birthday cake i promise um for my birthday cake i'll, I'll do a little tutorial um because i'm gonna cut the top tier um but then i'll probably be cutting the base as well because they're two different flavors so i'll do a little video of that i'll get someone to film it as i cut it yeah i saw your mum she's sweet <laughs> um yes this live as per usual was lovely oh um hey i saw your beige apron with your logo on where did you get it from where did you get it made um it was etsy the tag has actually rubbed off because i've had it for um a year and i've washed it loads of times because it's my the main one that i use um i don't actually i don't even wear aprons anymore i just get all my clothes dirty um now that i have like merch i just wear the merch and get it dirty um it's i think it's peppermint peppermint something um but yeah like i say the tags worn off i think it's peppermint prints something like that type in peppermint onto etsy and see if anything comes up um but also on etsy just type in personalized aprons and you should get quite a range i'm not sure if she's still like trading anymore so um yeah, it's probably best to just type in that you want a personalised apron and then loads of people that do them will come up. Um, very similar, because it was quite a basic apron design. Like, obviously, it's just a standard apron with the logo printed. So you will probably find lots of people that will do very similar if you can't find her. But hopefully, that's quite a distinctive name. Oh, I just remember the last bit. That's it. I was trying to think whilst I was chatting because um, my mind goes a thousand miles an hour. Um, it's called Peppermint Fizz. That's what it's called. So hopefully you can find it on Etsy. But like I say, if you can't, then it might be that she's not trading because I know there's a couple of people that I used to order off last year um, for like packaging and stuff, like personalised packaging, but they don't trade anymore. They've closed their shops. So that's why I started making my own. Like were, I used to buy like little cards like this off of someone, but then I just made my own on Vistaprint because I designed the merch anyway. So I just used the merch designs for those. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah. So, I'm going to love you and leave you because I need to film the pod. And then this lady's coming to collect her cake. So, I'm going to box it up quickly now, ready for her. Um, but, yeah. I hope you enjoyed. Um, managed to find some, but have to buy in bulk. Yeah. So, um try these i think etsy i can't see that they would make you buy in bulk um but like obviously i don't know because i haven't looked but um hopefully you can find one that does just personalize because um people buy them as like birthday presents and stuff uh will you be doing sales for merch um do you mean like sale as in like discount or do you mean like sales as in sorry i'm being blonde um Yes, because you can always direct people to it. Um, sorry, I am not following. <laughs> um, so, Eliza, I think I pronounced your name right. Um, do you mean like sale is in discount? Because I will be doing a discount on the week of release. So my birthday is on the Wednesday merch is all the new merch products everything is coming out on the wednesday um and i'm going to be doing discount for my birthday um so i think i haven't decided yet but it's either going to be for the week of my birthday from my birthday which is a wednesday so it'll be wednesday to sunday um or like wednesday to wednesday or it's going to be just on the wednesday haven't decided yet um it depends how much stuff i have because like if loads of people want to buy it that first week then i might not have enough stuff to have it on sale for that long because um like if people buy it all so yeah um it will be discounted um as like a birthday launch but i haven't decided yet whether it's just for the 18th or whether it's like the 18th to the sunday or the 18th to the 25th um but yeah i will be posting all about that on my instagram very soon uh, because i'm going to be doing sneak peeks but there's a few new products um which i was actually meant to show you in today's video no 
Yes, I am. Sorry, God. Um, so not on the live, but in today's video that I filmed, the spend the day with me. It's not a day in the life. It's just like a spend the day with me because it's just random stuff. Um, but I will be showing you new merch stuff. So there's a few new products that I've made, um, which are like kind of homeware um, and beauty stuff. So like one's a scrunchie um, and then there's some coasters um which i've all which i've made and then there will also be the merch as in like clothing so um yeah you will be able to see those very very soon um but i will be putting them in that video um half past fashion i don't know what you mean um i think i might have missed the beginning of the sentence or any or something like that um or it was in reaction to something I said but I think I've missed it because I'm not sure what you mean um so sorry um because you said yes can always direct people to it um but yeah if I miss the first bit of that I'm sorry because I'm not sure um what do you mean but yeah um as I said I am going to love you and leave you so I will see you in my next video probably um which will be i think i'm gonna put it up on saturday as a little extra one because tuesday is a bit far away so um yeah i think there'll be a new video on saturday if i get it edited and then there'll be the podcast on sunday so i will see you very very soon bye